Hello and welcome to Profiles in Risk. This is your host, Tony Canyas. And today I have with me Dave Ternay. Dave is an actuary, longtime actuary, and uh, actively an actuary today. I don't, I don't want to mention your current company unless you want to mention it, but an, an active actuary today and the founder of EmergingAlly.com. Dave, thank you for joining me today. How's it going? It's going good. How are you doing, man? I am doing fantastic. Uh, we are uh, chatting uh, a week and a day after InsureTech Connect. InsureTech Connect was awesome. Uh, awesome. I am eating a uh, uh, cough drops by, by the bucket load uh, because I'm yep. dealing with, with some long long COVID. Uh, really just a Oof. cough. Uh, so it, I was telling you the story before we started recording. So I had COVID very, very, very soft. Uh, it was really just a runny nose for three days. Uh, yeah. And and, uh, and th then I got both a COVID booster and a, a flu vaccine on the same day. And they beat me up. And I still have a cough that's driving me crazy. Uh, so thank you for, jo for joining me today. Uh, so so I, I've known you for, for, for a while, basically, as, as, as a prospect slash client, uh, since I've been working in insurance recruiting for the last, yeah. the last five years. Um, and recently we reconnected because uh, the CAS w went through a difficult election uh, where uh, all of a sudden diversity and inclusion and whether they would support diversity and inclusion. And I say they because I'm, I'm not an actuary, right? Sure. So, so yeah. I, I'm an observer here. I don't have a vote. Um, <laughs> But basically, there 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 was a um, contentious election in the CAS, where where one of the things that was really debated was whether CAS should even have an opinion on diversity and inclusion. And uh, I posted several times in support of the forces of good, uh, which thankfully won the election. Uh, yes. And basically, you reached out. And, and we chatted again and, and basically we had this conversation offline. And then at the end, I'm like, we need to have this on the podcast. We need to do it again. Uh, yeah. And I am very proudly wearing my insurance quality t-shirt today for the first time. Thank you, Elisa, for sending me the t-shirt. Uh, I was telling you about insurance quality before we started yeah. for the listeners. Uh, I will include the show notes to El Elisa's uh, appearance on my podcast to, to, to talk about insurance quality. And my recent video on Phoenix Insure Equality's tool that is now live. Uh, so, 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 David. Uh, so, Dave. Uh, either, either works. I've been called a lot of things in my life. I respond to Dave or David. It doesn't matter. So, so, uh, Monsieur Tournay. Uh, by the, by the way, is, is, I haven't been called that since fourth grade. Uh, I, I, I'm guessing Tournay is a French last name. Well, that's an interesting story in and of itself, but we haven't figured out where the Ternay came from. Um, uh, my, my family tree on my dad's side like <laughs> ends very quickly uh, in terms of going back through ancestry. And we haven't figured out where the Ternay came from. Somewhere along the line, the name we think got changed. We don't know. The, the, most of the relatives seem to be like German or, or Irish. So that, um, that's very interesting because if it was I German, I, I don't think it would, it would have the accent on the E. No, that's why we think it got changed at some point. We don't know. I don't know. But I go by it and I, I, I just I just rock and roll with it. So okay. perfect, perfect. OK, so 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 so, so Dave, um, I, I think they go very much hand in hand. Uh, yeah. Why? I, I, I'll, 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 start, I'll start with the obvious. You look, at least from the outside, like a very traditional insurance guy, right? Yeah. Male, white. Yeah. Uh, and now in, 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 in the, you know, uh, third or fourth quarter of your career, right? Uh, <laughs> you, you, fourth quarter, but that's you, okay. You, you, you look There's very... going to be a two minute warning. I'm going to get extra time in there somewhere. Yeah. You know, they're football minutes. They're uh, football minutes. So, so it's good. For, from the outside, you look like a very traditional insurance yeah. guy. So why would a very traditional insurance guy start a website or an organization or a website? Let's call it a website for now. Yeah. Uh, about DEI. Okay. So it's you're probably going to be a longer story than you want. I don't know. You can edit it later. 
Um, but so um, I've been sort of very in the DEI space for about 20 years on my own, doing stuff, um, coaching people, mentoring people. I um, helped the Casualty Actual Society write their first diversity and inclusion strategy. I helped the SOA was on their task force to write theirs. Uh, I've been a um, uh, um, executive sponsor of an uh, um, uh, employee resource group um, and done just on a lot of things on my own. Um, and that all kind of stems from, you mentioned this, right? You know, I'm a white male, right? Uh, definitely, you know, from the insurance and, you know, in the insurance industry, this is so typical. Um, but I was brought up Quaker. And, uh, you know, growing up, and I grew up in Philadelphia in a very mixed neighborhood. So like, like all my, like most of my friends were, 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 very demographically different than me. So I was sort of used to that. Um, but I got into, when I got into the profession very early on, uh, you know, passed a couple exams or whatever, and somebody uh, mentioned to me, I'm not going to say names or where I was or anything like that, but they said, you know, you, that uh, they were surprised that I passed the exam because I was Quaker because I was a because being Quaker is you're a pacifist. And they said you need to be aggressive to be to, to get through the exams. You need to be a go-getter. You need to be aggressive in business and you should really think about changing your career and not being an actuary. And uh, that was kind of a moment for me. Uh, it's taken a long time for me to be able to talk about it. Uh, I went, hiding my religion as much as I could for about 10 years. Um, and uh, it took, and I, you know, to shout out where it's due, my wife, now that girlfriend at the time, but now my wife, kind of when, she, when I finally told her, I didn't even tell her for 10 years, uh, she slapped me around, rightly so, for a bit. And, and you know, like, like any, wonderful person would told me that the person was completely an idiot and um, helped me get my head back on straight. And uh, it's still embarrassing to talk about, to be honest with you, because it's, I don't know. And, and I hit it because I didn't know, I figured other people felt that way. So in order to move my career, I'd have to conform. And, um, you know, I fell into group think and all that. But after uh, my wife kind of set me straight a little bit and I started being myself more and it was a very gradual process. You sort of try things out. Um, that's when the career actually started to go, you know, do, do really nice things. Um, and I started to feel more comfortable and, um, and, you know, that's why I like, you know, I have over here, you know, up there on the wall, that's, you know, my, my diploma as it were, but um, you know, that's when I'm tell people I'm an actuary, a fellow of the Casualty Actuary Society, there's a bit of a middle finger going out to a particular individual. Uh, uh, very, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I can say that on a podcast. No, 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 you can definitely say it on the podcast. The hilarious part is that this person's whole comment is that uh, Quakers are, pay, are, are pacifists, so I love that this is not very pacifist. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, this is, well, I mean, a pacifist, I'm not going to use violence to, con to, to convince you, but doesn't mean I'm not going to be, a, anyone that knows me knows I'm, I'm not exactly a doormat. So, um, but it took me a while. I like turned myself into a doormat for the longest time. Um, but then that's when I kind of got, I mean, I was always of that thought process of, you know, everyone's equal and, you know, whatever. But this really, that really kind of was a moment for me. And when I started to get out, get myself out of it, I really, um, sorry, it's kind of turns me a little bit, even now. No, 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 no problem. Um, it, 
I started to like, what can I do to help other people not go through this? Like I have to, I can't not help other people do this, get through this. So I, you know, start, you know, I started mentoring people, coaching people, whatever, got involved in the CAS on the diversity committee. I chaired that for six years, um, did the things I talked about earlier um, and would be trying active within bureaucracies and outside of bureaucracies on this. And, you know, I, I've had a number, as you mentioned, long career, um, not with one company. I've bounced around a couple of different places. And when George Floyd happened, I was between gigs, right? And, you know, and normally my outlets would be go through the company, go through, you know, the volunteering that I would do. And I didn't have those because for a variety of reasons, I'd stop the volunteering because, you know, I was burning the candle at both ends and the middle. <laughs> um, you know, I ended, I ended up in uh, an emergency room at one point. Um, looking it, up at ceiling tiles the, 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 briefly. this was at the time where you had a horrific uh commute right yeah 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 i i had i was commuting uh, i was commuting to work and you know living in a hotel and then coming back three or four days a week and it just burnt me at both ends um and and uh so i kind of had given i something had to give so i gave up the volunteering but i still tried to do what i could in, in different places and George Floyd happened and I, I was between gigs and I didn't have anything, I didn't have any outlet. And I started talking to people. And I mean, I don't know if I can give any shout outs here. Um, uh, feel free, absolutely. Um, but I, I got talking, I got connected with people on LinkedIn, Amber Ouellette, um, uh, Callie Thomas. Love um, Amber. Yeah, I love One of my Amber. Favorite people. Yeah, um, you know, Joanne, uh, friends of mine, Joanne Payne, CJ Manuel, Furquan Burke, and was just talking to them about things. And um, it's this idea of, and, and other people had called me saying, like, all this is going on in the world. It's a pandemic. I have, you know, in the house, we have family with health problems. I can't go out in the street in the middle of a pandemic and and, and do this, right? So I got to do something. What do I do? Give money. Yeah, okay, I did that. that really, that's nice. Um, and, and people were asking me, like, you've been in, in sort of doing stuff. You seem to be a pretty decent ally at this. I'll let other people judge me on that one. Um, asking me for advice and, and sort of the idea of a blog got started of like, well, what if I just took those phone calls, wrote them down, put them on the website and maybe I help more than one person at a time. I don't know. Um, and so I've been doing it for about a little over two years now with a, I try and do like two posts a month. That's probably a little overly energetic. Um, my, my, I, I'm, I'm constantly talking to my wife going, I need to, I need to figure something else. All right. Um, and, uh, um, and that's just, that's kind of how it all it all got started. And um, you know, I it's just it's just a passion of mine. I, like I just it has to it has to change. And the insurance industry is really 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 bad, uh, as your insure quality T shirt says. Um, you know, I, I you know it's. I mean, the best way to describe it is stale, male, and pale. I mean, it's just, you know, um, so anyway, and that, that's kind of the whole story behind the website, the blog and everything. And, um, and I, I, I've got to give, give, give a shout out to, to the website. The, the, um, this is not like, like insurance nerds, which, which is my background. Uh, we used to publish three or four times a week back when, when we published uh, articles every, every week. Um, and sometimes we kind of phoned it in and ended up with, with like, a, like a three paragraph quickly written kind of thing. Uh, your stuff, like a good actuary, tends to be deep. Your, your stuff t t tends to be 
uh, more of 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 a uh, of 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 a long form read. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I try and keep it at like 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 two pages, give or take, somewhere because I know people don't have a lot of yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And a lot yeah. of people are probably going to read it on their phone if they're going to read it. So. Mm -hmm. Um, but I try and make a point, be quick about it. I, I you know, so, but, and but it's it, really personal experience. It's per, it's per, it's a personal thing. I know not everyone's necessarily going to agree, um, sometimes and whatever. Um, I run everything by my editing staff, which is my wife and my son, <laughs> you know, so, and, and I do have friends that actually for some stuff, I will reach out to. You know, I mentioned sort of Joanne and CJ and Furquan, but also like Somil John and and others who who can give me different perspectives sometimes on things, uh, even from the just life experience. I'm not don't mean anything in particular by that, um, but uh, to make sure I'm not, you know, doing the OK Boomer moment, you know, <laughs> you know. Uh and and the, by now there's a good we're recording in in, in uh, early october 2022 there's a good 50 articles on the on the website so there's a yeah. lot there uh impressive that, that it's all created by a single person uh and then i was looking at, at the uh resources section and, and uh yeah uh, i i tried to build out some other pages and it's not the greatest. I, I, I'm one guy and I've done all of this on my what, own. No, no, but on this, my spare this, time, this is, so. this, this is very like the mind of an actuary. Like here's a oh, list yeah. of the things, right? Uh, oh, yeah. the, here's the list of the movies, books, graphic novels, search topics, uh, uh, professional organizations, TED talks, Twitters, LinkedIn pages, websites, and uh, news groups that I recommend. Uh, and all of them yeah. linked. Uh, and, and actually, there's some stuff here that I was not familiar with. So, so this is helpful, uh, even, even for me. Uh, and, and, and then the lifestyle page <laughs> really kind of threw me for That me. was, I was trying to do something. I haven't touched that in a long time. It's kind of embarrassing at this moment. But I was trying to give a throw out to some diverse businesses out there that okay. I things I, that I like no, you know I, I've got to say it, it's it's very beautifully designed again <laughs> for an actuary I would have expected this to be text with with no graphs graphic graphics at all yeah uh, yeah yeah so so no overall I, 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 I'm 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 not I've been told I'm not a typical actuary dude I mean let's just face facts right now uh, yeah. I'm a little of a different breed so um that's so, just who so, i am so I, uh, emer emerging ally.com i will definitely include the note the the, the link uh so so going, going back to your story when, when you when you uh, so normally i record the podcast without having the conversation before without looking at the website before because i want my real reaction to be captured in this case we had this conversation and now we're rehaving it to record it and, and so, so the audience didn't get like my jaw hitting the floor when, when, when you told me a story about what you were told about, about, about being Quaker and, uh, and this perception that you wouldn't make as an actuary. That, that's, that is insane in, 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 that is so crazy. Uh, and and I, I think it, it, what I love about your story, I, I, it, 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 it illuminates a lot of things that are really important in my mind. Uh, number one, not all diversity is visible. Right, the, the the classic example is is the LGBT community, where 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 some of them can hide very well, some of them can't. Mm -hmm. uh, um, religion is is one of those things that generally is not super visible, right? Yeah, if if if, if you're a a Hasidic Jew and and and, and you wear the 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 yarmulke, yeah. or or if 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 you're a Muslim, a traditional Muslim woman, and 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 you wear the the hijab or or or, or if you're right. Sikh and have the yeah, yeah exactly. exactly exactly but but most Chris, most versions of Christianity are not particularly easy to 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 tell apart from the way you dress right uh, uh, Quaker I, I grew up in Costa Rica which is ninety percent Catholic or when I was growing mm -hmm. up I was ninety percent Catholic um, 
I had no context on how to identify a Quaker in the street, right? Uh, now, you can't. I, don't worry I, about I, it. I, I, that, that's kind of what I figured, right? Uh, now, after uh, going to Cagney, uh, Cagney is, is the casualty actress of New York. New York. Yep. It, uh, at least before COVID, that meeting was always at uh, uh, at the New Yorker Hotel. I don't know if it's back there. If, if it is, I might start going know. back. Okay. Uh, so, so after after going to Cagney several times uh, and, and other, I've also been to 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 the the one in Foxwoods for 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 the Hartford actuaries. For, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Kane, yeah, yeah. And I, I've been I've been to also Case in in Charlotte. Like I've, I've been to a bunch yeah. of early events as, as a recruiter. Actuaries are very very sure, yeah. for me. Uh, yeah, yeah. So so we stay active in the actuarial circles. Uh, very quickly, especially at Cagney. Very quickly learned to recognize the 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 Hasidic Jews, right? That they were the yamika, like, like they dressed in a certain way. There, there, there's a lot of them in the, in the New York trail community. Mm -hmm. But like for me, it was mind blowing the fact that a religion that that is not even visible to to your average coworker uh, would lead somebody to tell you that that you're mm -hmm. that, that that you're just not gonna make it as an actuary like like it, like it just it's just so crazy no 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 number two i love the story of of how it was once you decided to quit uh, to quit hiding your religion yeah that your career took off and my guess is that you became a lot more confident well i think it was it was a couple of things actually it was when you're trying to hide, you don't want to be different. So in every meeting, you go into the group thing. You literally don't distinguish yourself from everybody else. And you're actively sort of consciously or unconsciously trying not to distinguish yourself, right? So how do you move ahead in your career? You uh, uh, Fundamentally, you distinguish yourself, <laughs> right? So so that's one thing. Um, and, and I don't know that confidence was it. It's just I became me. Like, I was like, I, I suddenly became like, well, if I'm going to get nailed for this, f it. I'm gonna I'm gonna give start giving the crazy idea, and people are like, "Let's, huh? That's interesting. That's well, okay." And and I also started to, and then maybe this is some of me as well. Is if you if you abandon the group think and you abandon kind of the idea you want to be like everybody else, you open yourself up to jobs, to non-standard jobs, right? So like people are like, I constantly would have throughout my career, I've had people go, why are you doing that? Like, I never do that. Whatever it is I was doing, right? Like I run, I helped build a data warehouse and end up running a team of like 160, you know, and I was the only actuary. There was an IT team right and like people would come to me at lunch and they go why are you doing like this is crazy like there's no what are you doing um and and your idea of success also changes like my idea of success morphed really from being you know kind of rising the ranks so to speak as to also like being comfortable and like i'm making a difference you know, and I mean, I, let's be clear. I mean, when I when I came out, when I you know started in this profession, was taking exams and all that. I like everybody. Like I wanted to be a chief actuary, like everybody. Like that's gone. That's not happening. It's never going to happen for me. Um, and that's okay. Like if I can like help. I always tell people like you know when I interview. Um, which who knows might be tomorrow based on on this podcast. But um, I, <laughs> I, I always tell, like I tell people, and it's true, like I want to build something. I, I want to look back and say, you know, like we as a team did this and, you know, and those things are important to me. And it's not about climbing the ladder anymore. And some of that's age, but also some of that is, is just, if you, throw out the group think if you throw out trying to be like everyone else success becomes a much more varied thing and and there's lots more options for it 
you know, I don't know if that any of that made yeah, any no, no, sense. No, no, no. A lot of it speaks to me. My career is very similar to where when I started, I uh, got a bunch of education, right? I got, I got, I got my MBA, my CVCU, nine other designations, a couple of Toastmasters uh, designations, and people early on were were asking me. This was the first like two and a half years of, of my insurance career, maybe the first three years. And people kept asking me, what do you want to do long term? Why, why, why are you getting all this education? Yeah. And I, I would say, I want to be CEO of Nationwide. And, the, and then I would say, and it was very sincere. And then I would say, and if I don't make it at Nationwide, I figure I'll become CEO at a smaller carrier. Mm-hmm. Ask me today, 12 years later, I don't even want to be a manager. Like, I'm very happy <laughs> with what I do. I, I've never been a people leader. I never want to be a people leader. Like, like in fact, both at uh, Jacobson and in my current organization, uh, I told them the same thing. I have no interest of leading this team. <laughs> I Because they kind of mentioned that. You know, the, uh, I'm an individual contributor. This is what I like to do. Yep. Uh, I took out kind of very similar. Like my definition of success really changed. And it became, I want to make enough to live comfortably and, and, and to save yeah. enough to retire someday, even though I don't yeah, want to yeah. retire. Uh, and, 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 uh, I want to do work that I love. Right. And I, yeah. I don't want to work crazy hours. I don't want to have a four hour commute. Uh, I'm okay with travel, but, but uh, yeah, I want to do it my way. Right. I want to be able to have long hair, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which in our industry is, is rare. Uh, yeah. Well, then, you, you talk about long hair being rare, rare. I've had this beard since 85. So I, I swear to God, people used to identify me. They go to the actuarial floor and they go, I'm looking for that actuary, the one um, he's uh, the, the one with the beard. That's the, the one I with had, the beard. And, I had no idea. Oh yeah, and and I'd be the and people would be like, oh, you mean Dave? Because there's like literally only I was the only one on the floor with a beard. Beard, beards are common today. They were not common. Uh, yeah, in 1990. I, I I would have thought that in the actuarial side beards are, are are kind of like the philosophy department of of of, of, no. of, a, of a college no. or, yeah, or like it's, no. not, it's not a big deal no no yeah. no 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 prim proper thing i is just sort of you know i'm especially back then especially back then it was it was insurance insurance 101 was i mean i'm talking when i started you could smoke in the office and there were yeah and and you had to wear a suit there wasn't it wasn't it wasn't even a, a, a like a, a, a sport coat in slacks. You had to wear a suit. So I had like four or five suits. I yeah. Oh, there was one was one time I was a suit. I went out and suit shopping and really like really liked this suit. It was really nice. It was a sort of a dark teal colored suit. I really liked it. And I I wore it into the office. I went whenever I'd wear it in, people would like like comment and rib me and everything like that because it wasn't blue or gray. <laughs> so wow i i, I uh, so so i grew up on nationwide yeah uh, i grew up on nationwide uh in uh the early 2010s uh and uh, so long before my time the the the, the, the there were there was the the basically back in the 70s uh you could smoke in the floor you had to wear a suit and uh women uh couldn't wear pants uh, they had to wear a, a dress or or uh, or, or skirt. Uh, they had to wear tights, and if if they got a, a run on on their tights, they they'd have to go home and change. Wow. Uh, or if another woman in, in the same floor uh, was wearing the same outfit, one of you would have to go home and change. Uh, really? It was distracting. Uh, so th- <laughs> there is a little like round. I don't know if it was round, but there, there's a little office. On the first floor of, of Nationwide uh, main building, it uh, in Columbus, Ohio, everything's Nationwide. But 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 there, there's yeah. like four Nationwide buildings right in right in downtown. The main one's called Plaza One, uh, so it's always been the same building. Plaza One has a little I don't remember if it's round or square, but anyway, a very visible office uh, that that is nowadays uh, HR. Uh, that used to be a woman's clothing store, so so wow. that if Something awful happened, yeah. like 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 a run in your in your tights, or like 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 somebody else wearing the same thing. You could buy something else and not have to go, go home to change. Wow! Like, 
this is mad men crap, right? Like, like absolutely yeah. saying we've come a long way, thankfully. And and the, and, and yeah. it gives me hope that we've come a long way. And I I see us at the at the beginning, you kind of said, you know, ah, oh, insurance, right? Um, I think we've come a long way, and I think that we are in the precipice of significant progress. Now, if 10 years from now, we're celebrating your retirement or, 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 or whatever, and we still have the same issues we have today, we have failed. And I, and I include myself very much in that we, because, because yeah. I'm very active in, in, in influencing the industry to move forward, right, to, to, to progress. Um, so things like currently, out, out, out of out of all the Fortune 100 carriers, then there's maybe I don't know 10 Fortune 100 carriers, maybe 15. Um, out of those, only a single one has a female CEO. Mm -hmm. It's a CEO of Progressive, right? Yeah. Out, 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 of, out of the Fortune 500 car uh, carriers, um, only like two or three. It's it's like the CEO of Progressive, the CEO of, of Accident Fund of Michigan, and that might be there might be a third one. Um, and women make, make up 60% of, of, of the yep. employee force with insurance and only 18% of the, of the leadership. Yep. Uh, and, and by leadership, I don't mean like VPs. I mean like managers and above. Like it, it's sad, right? And, and those are just the numbers that I'm really familiar with, but I'm sure it's very similar for, for like racial diversity. I'm sure it's very, very similar for, for LGBT diversity. In fact, it's probably yep. worse. I, I'm sure it's a lot worse for neurodiversity, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like I bet you there, there's not a single autistic VP in our industry, maybe in actuarial, who knows? Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm going away off the rails here. Uh, I know no, that's okay. And another thing that-, that you It's good rails, it's okay. Yeah, another thing that you mentioned is that one of the things that really pushed you to starting the blog was the, uh, uh, George Floyd. Yeah. Very interesting comment because there's this perception in the business world that at leadership uh, that, or I think there's this perception of the leadership that George Floyd was a big deal for the black community, right? And we have to do something or we have to at least appear like we're doing something because it was a big deal for the black community. You're not the first white person I run into for whom this was a big deal. Yeah. My, my girlfriend is, why does they come? She is rural Ohio German white. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty like, yeah. like blonde, blue white, very, very white. Uh, she was deeply affected by by, by yeah. there were many people were deeply affected. Many of my Minnesota friends who are very, very white were deeply affected by 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 the George Floyd uh, tragedy. Uh, and I and I think it's important for 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 our leadership to realize that that. Yeah. It wasn't a black tragedy. It was a human tragedy, an American tragedy, but more than anything, a human tragedy. Uh, so uh, it's so interesting to know that that, that it had that effect on on, on, on you. Yeah. Uh, well, I, you know, I mean, you can't watch, and I don't think I've been able to watch that full video. I, yet, I can't watch it today. You can't watch that video and not be hugely impacted as just a human being. I mean, dear God. Um, and um, it, it, it and it's you know then there's a lot of things that go with that video too and like you just go into um, you know I mean there's racial profiling but there's also there's um, you know all the stuff with um, uh, you know systemic racism and just all all of that. Uh, you know, some of it goes, you know, there's even things that go back to, um, you know, racial covenants and deeds and all of that kind of stuff where, you know, there's, um, you know, and, and, and even systemic things of from like 19, um, 1933, 1934 with the National Housing Act where even in the underwriting guidelines to the Housing Act, it it, it was um, uh, mortgages were insured based on race. It's explicitly in yeah, there. Yeah, you the, you literally the, the, you literally couldn't sell your home to a black family. Right, you, you weren't allowed to. It. And well, and one of the interesting things I think this is true. I found this out was where George Floyd died, is is an intersection of 
two of those is two of those neighborhoods of what of a white neighborhood and a black neighborhood that if you look on those national the those um, underwriting guidelines from like 1934 that that dividing line is right literally physically where he died oh wow like, yeah and and the evident then it's just been a uh, so that is super interesting that is that is like hmm i i don't like I have to double check that. So somebody's going to watch this podcast and go, <laughs> Dave is wrong, bad actuary. Yeah. You so, know. So, so my actuary is like, nobody oh, ever yeah. double checks my facts. I can say whatever I want, but so my actuary is going to actually correct you on the comments. Oh, oh yeah. Oh no. I'm going to get, I'm going to get peer reviewed out at the wazoo. Yeah. You're trust 100 me, feet off. Like yeah. Here's the map. <laughs> yeah. 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 Please stop saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, um, uh, a couple, a couple of last questions. So, so first of all, sure. since you've been so active on, on uh, DEI committees, etc., so if 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 a company leader uh, is 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 watching this late into into a podcast, they're clearly yep. deeply interested. What advice do you have for the leadership or, uh, in in insurance uh, for how to make real uh, real change? When it comes to DEI, as as opposed to Kabuki theater, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, actually, a couple of bits of advice. One, whatever you do, it's top down. It's not going to come ground up. You have to model that behavior. You have to force that to happen. You have to move that through the organization, and you have to. You you have to not tolerate the the it's culture change you have to force the culture change and you're going to have to take some people aside and go no you can't do that anymore that's number one number two is listen you don't actually have the answer listen and there are um uh, some great people out there on LinkedIn uh, that can help you understand and listen. Future Kane, uh, oh, I forget her first name, Mifune. I follow them on LinkedIn. Um, uh, Minda Hartz, um, all of that. If you have employee resource groups, go to them, send your leadership to them and have them listen. Most employee resource groups aren't very well supported by senior leaders. Like senior leaders should just show up. It makes a huge difference. When they are having an event, show up to the event. People will learn, people will follow the senior leader because they'll want the FaceTime. And then listen, don't lecture at the event. Just no, no, I'm here to, I'm here to listen. It has a huge impact. And if you don't have employee resource groups, figure out how to start one, for God's sakes. Um, and, and I want to put in a plug here, because there are not just within companies employee resource groups, there are professional employee, essentially professional affinity groups that are DEI focused. And in the actuarial profession, there are, there are six, and now I'm going to mess up their names right now. But um, there's the International Association of Black Actuaries, and it's been around for a couple decades. It's really, they're really good. Uh, Organization of Latino Actuaries, they've only been around about six years or so. Yeah, they, they're awesome. Um, the Sexuality and Gender Alliance of Actuaries, or SEGA, uh, they're LGBTQ. Um, uh, uh, Network of Actuarial Women and Allies, NAWA. Um, Abacus, which is the Asian American one. And then uh, SANA, the South Asian Network of Actuaries. So that's the sixth one. Um, they are all doing wonderful things in the DEI space. And uh, for a company to go to them for support, to, to support them, but also learn from them. Um, NAWA just had an event today, but they all have events throughout the year. Um, IABA has an annual convention that is absolutely wonderful. And they all have tons and tons of 
actuarial talent there. And they, all the way from high school, all the way up through experienced people. Um, I mean, if, you, if, if you're looking for a manager, this is a great place to look. These, and a lot of these groups have started in the last year, year or two. Um, and Nawa's one year old. And these are people that founded these groups on their own time, built organizations, put strategic plans together, put tactical plans in place to, to, to achieve these strategic goals, put committees together, recruited for those committees, and got people in place and empowered them to do things. Well, gee whiz, guess what, what any company would want a manager or leader to do? What did well, they've just proven it to you? Uh, which goes to another point. If you if you have employee resource groups in your company today, freaking go out there and talk to them about talent. Because if you've got an opening, talk to them. Because they're doing that on their own time for you already. And and it's an amazing source of talent. Don't think they know what job openings are out there. The number of times I've gone to employee resource group events and happened just happened to mention like I knew about this opening people were like oh really what because the networks are different the word of mouth networks are different so um I would encourage anyone to 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 go out there to listen to be active and then do like being an ally requires you doing things right if you're in a meeting and a woman is interrupted, jump on that, stop that, go back and say, Alicia, you know, you were having making a really good point there. I'd love to hear that. And like turn your chair and look at her, right? And everybody in the meeting will shut the freak up and listen to her because it's it that's because you're doing that. Um, you know, it it the model the behavior, do that. So uh, it was more than one thing. Sorry, I went off. No, no, that, that was amazing. That was a that was a master. That was my soapbox. I got on my uh, soapbox. That, that so. was a master class on on how to get started and how to be better. Uh, I would add, if, if you are in the actuarial leadership of a major carrier, and your your company is not putting your money where your mouth is, uh, and not supporting at least a couple of of these organizations. How on earth do you expect to to yeah to, to be? But, to what, what, I want to get one name. I want to get one name correct here. Yep. Uh, Ashani Mafuko on LinkedIn. Uh, she's one I follow. She's really good. Uh, she has a whole bunch of stuff. But Future Kane, Ashani Mafuko, uh, Minda Hearts, um, they're they're amazing. But yeah, no, it it, it it's it, it's it's. What people I think don't understand my age and older is that DEI is table stakes actually. Exactly, precisely. For, for kids coming out so, of college. Uh, for, okay, so, so now you're speaking my language, right? I'm not an actuary. Yep. And I'm not a demographer, but I play one on TV. I wrote the book on how to engage millennials with insurance. Currently writing the book on how to engage Gen Z with insurance. A lot more challenging, by the way. Yep. Uh, yes, for both generations meaning anybody under 40 today, and even people yep. 40 or 41, um, diversity is table stakes. Yeah, well, in, well we, there's an interesting stat, right? Gallup does a poll infrequently of what's, what's the percentage of the country that's LGBTQ+, plus, right? Now they suspended it for a while with COVID and they started up again. And the big news out of that was, gee, it's gone up to 7.1% engage but if you look at the results you'll see it's very flat for older generations for generation x and generation z however for millennials and generation z y, y and z it's y and z whatever for more recent generations it's through the roof gen z one in five millennials one in ten Right. So I've, even where i work i've mentioned to people i said if you're interviewing somebody that's under 40 you have a minimum one in 10 chance that they're LGBTQ plus. And if they aren't, they probably have friends that are, and they're okay with all that. You better be inclusive or they're going to know they're going to pick it up and they're going to walk it, away. It, correct. Correct. They're going to walk away. And, Sorry. And, and, got on the soapbox. No, 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 no. This is a hugely important one. Uh, they're going to walk away. And in a, in, in a post COVID remote first world, 
uh, <laughs> they don't even have to move. <laughs> right, they, they don't, don't even actually away. have to walk. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They are quite simply going to apply at a different carrier yeah. or insure tech or whatever organization. And mm -hmm. you have zero chance of keeping them if you are perceived uh, as non uh as, as not an ally, as not an active ally yes. on this fight. It's quite simply a matter of right or wrong in, in our minds. Yeah. It, it's, it's that simple. And, and that one in five in Gen C, that is so interesting because uh, everything I had read what was that, that our best estimate of, of the number of people who, who, are, who are LGBT is about, is about one in 10. So one in five in Gen Z, that, that is- It was 20%. That is, yeah, that, that's, that's I, I mean, I'm not an actuary in my world. If it's not 50%, it's not that significant, but for an actuary, no, no, like 20% like is a huge amount of people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I always, I always translate things to like, like, you know, I mean, 15% is one in seven people. That's a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. But basically, <laughs> if, if, if you interview, five to seven people for a job, yeah. chances are at least one of them is LGBT. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, sure. and, and if they're millennials and engineers, all of the other ones are 100% supportive and, and yeah. they're stable stakes. So you have to get this right 100%. What, this has been really, really good. One, one last question. So more, yeah, more on, on, on the career advice side. So yeah. Young actuary listening, and, and, and then they're, they're not your traditional white male. Either it's a woman or yep. uh, they're black or Latino or, or they're neurodiverse or they're LGBT or they're Quaker or whatever. They're, they're just not the norm. Uh, what advice do you have for them uh, that, that might help them actually get to be the chief actuary if, if that's what they were dreaming of doing? Um. It's a good question. Well, in, in actuarial circles, first off, pass the exams. I mean, that's it's that's the obvious advice, but it's also really difficult because you need that whole support system to do it. You can't, you know, even at CAS meetings when we, you know, thank you know, honor the new fellows and new associates, we always say. You know, it's it's you know the, the the you know the spouses and the mothers and the dads and the brothers and sisters and everybody that help you get there, because it's just getting through the exams is really hard. Um, I think I think a couple of things you know aside from the exams. One, I, I will put it out there. If I'm on LinkedIn, if anybody is in that situation, they want to call, they want to contact me or connect with me. Let me know. I'll, I'll, I can do what I can. Um, build your network. Um, you know, reach out to people. Build a network um, that you can trust and and work with. Um, find mentors is is another is another good thing. And find people that will sponsor you for things. Um, um, try you know. It's tough in the insurance industry, but be your authentic self. Because quite frankly, if you're not, you're just going to be miserable wherever you are, you know. Um, and if you're miserable, you're not going to do well in your career. Very few people can overcome being unhappy at the job and rise up the ranks, so to speak, because it, it, it just shows. Um, but um, uh, we're, and work on like we always talk about like working on the soft we, we always, people talk about the thing of actuaries is just heads down do that like heads down do that isn't actually going to get you to the next level it's going to be the soft skills it's going to be communication it's going to be working with people um, and and um, uh, really think about not just, you know, in my day, it was you built your resume based on your, based on jobs and job titles. And now it's very much, you build it on experience. So you can stay in a job, but get lots of different experience by working on projects and things like that. And, and do always try, try something different, try something new. Um, 
but really building that building that network and and working on some of those soft skills and for actuaries i think you recommend this book a lot but i love this book um quiet by susan kane um All is, the is, it, it should be almost required reading in the actuarial space um because everyone everyone thinks an extrovert is what needs to get ahead and that's not true um 50 of the people are introverts out there and you know you can build some really i've i've built some i'm an introvert um and just build that network of people you trust and and you can build a very deep very powerful network that way i mean you know we started this off with how did you start your website and who did you talk to i i talked to some people that were longtime friends and and people that i trusted a lot with some very vulnerable stuff to say um and and I would trust them in a heartbeat. Joanne, CJ, Furquan, Callie, Amber, uh, in a in a heartbeat to for advice, for career advice, for for anything. They're uh, all all of them are super intelligent. And they're amazing, but um, you know, super intelligent and amazing gets you only so far. You need that network of people that can work with you and people that will sit there and say things you know put you in a positive light when you're not in the room right uh sponsor when, sponsor you that's the yes. word i was looking for but, I, I, but yeah i I, so. I would add you need mentors yeah internal and external and you need a sponsor which which is yep. that person that that puts you in a good light when you're in the room uh and uh quite yeah quiet by Susan kane is mandatory reading for 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 any introvert, which includes a lot of actuaries. I would guess a good amount more yeah. than fifty percent. Um, and uh, if you're having trouble building your network, uh, read uh, "Never Eat Alone." Uh, oh yeah, that's a good. In, in my, uh, I, I think it's it, it's it's the modern how to make friends and influence people. Yeah. Uh, has not been updated for the for the post COVID remote world, but. Yep. It it doesn't it, it's one, pretty easy to 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 translate in, into the remote world. One one thing I always do at like a CAS event or or whatever a regional thing like Kmart, Cagney or Kane or whatever, and, and it's really uncomfortable for me to do it, but I do it. I try and do it anyway to force myself out. Is I'll just say, okay, I'm going to talk to three people I've never talked to before. And it might not go anywhere. And sometimes it's, you know, and, and, and then I can't, I'll continue to build on, on things with people. I, I am the one that is like, hey, let's have a coffee. Let's just have coffee and um, have a virtual coffee. Before COVID, when it was in person, I'd have a coffee and I'd like pay, pay for them, pay for their coffee at Starbucks. It's like the best five dollars you've ever spent. Oh yeah, people spend as much money as you can buying coffee for for people you respect and want to learn from. Oh yeah, it, it best investment you'll ever make. It is. It is by far. It is by far. But even virtual coffee, I've had virtual coffees with people in like Australia and, and all that kind of stuff. Was was just to say, uh, just to get to know you know, and you don't treat it transactionally. At least I can't. It's just to get to know you and just how are you doing and all of that. And like, you know, how we connected, right? And we, we kept talking and we lost track for each other for a while. And then we, life circles back. Oh, I, 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 I knew where you were, but, but I'm the sales guy. But you're the sales guy, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I would add, uh, give to your network without keeping track. Just... Yes. It, it, and, and regardless of how early you are in your career, you can help. Uh, yeah. And in, in fact, uh, if, if you find the mentor, become or be open to becoming a reverse mentor for them, yes. right? So, for, for example, yes. uh, in the actuarial space, if you're a young actuary just working on your exams and you connect with, with somebody that has 30, 35 years of experience, 
they can teach you a lot about the actual profession, about the exams, etc. You can teach them a lot about technology, right? Yes. You, you very likely are a better programmer than, than they are, right? You, well, hell, you, you, so I, I need somebody occasionally to help me with social media, like this whole Twitter exactly thing. Exactly. So, so, so those know. things that might seem super like social media is a great example because it's not yeah. super technical right those seem those things that are just natural to you because you grew up doing them are can be difficult for somebody that's been in the industry for 30 well, years uh, yeah well i mean all <laughs> okay so i'm gonna let my geek flag fly um so all in, all a mentor is is somebody that is more experienced in something else than you do it doesn't necessarily mean age mm -hmm. right so I've, I, I, when I was in high school, I, I did Dungeons and Dragons, but I stopped for the longest time. I love, love it. it. Um, I tried to stay in touch, but life happens. My son got into it in college. So he, he's now running a family game and he kind of mentors me in Dungeons and Dragons. Like, no, he's like, no, dad, you can't quite, that doesn't work that way. Okay. Well, how does that work? Oh, okay. All right. You know, so uh, by the by the way, uh, nowadays there are wonderful tools to run to to well, there's wonderful digital tools to run a in-person campaign or even an online campaign. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, trust me. It's like post-COVID. Really when I say post -COVID. we have when I say we have a family game, my so I'm originally from Philadelphia. So I'm up in Connecticut. So we get my brother online from Philly and his wife on online. So we're doing this all virtually. I love that. Absolutely. It is, that. it is, it oh. is fantastic. I just love it. I just love DD. I'm just such a geek. I'm sorry. For okay. For I, I, I will tell you right now, from I, I've been I nervously, literally, I nervously roll 20-sided dice over here. I've been nervous this entire time. I'm just rolling <laughs> the dice. I, I don't know if you heard that or not. No, no, I, I was going to say I couldn't hear. So you have a good microphone that doesn't catch that. So feel free to do it during meetings all day because nobody's oh, going to ever realize me, you're do. doing people, it. I've admitted this to people where people are like, what the hell's that noise? I'm like, well, okay. So, that is fan Dave, that is fantastic. Uh, okay. Uh, I know, I know. We've gone too long. We, we've gone way long, but this has been such a great episode. This, this is what I love about this medium it is yeah. that it, it can be 15 minutes it can be an hour and a half as long as it's good i'm happy to have the conversation uh it has been such a great conversation uh thank you so much for for for, for your time no uh, problem. thank you man thank it, you it, any young actuary that that made it i don't know an hour and 15 minutes deep into this conversation god bless you number one yes uh, no, no, number two, you probably want to reach out to, 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 to Dave b b because clearly like, like I'm on LinkedIn, please you reach out. You wouldn't have made it this far if you didn't like his style. Uh, and no, no, number, number three, uh, young actor or young actuary in training. Uh, if you've never played Dungeons and Dragons, you will very likely like it because you're oh. a nerd. You wouldn't be an actor if you weren't. <laughs> Probability out the wazoo. It's great. Exactly. The, the correlation between those two things is oh, it's fantastic. Super high, right? Uh, so, so, so check it out. Uh, and and uh, yeah, that's all I've got for now. Such a yeah. Pleasure. Well, uh, and, and I would say emergingally.com. Emerging people ally. that are very, you know, uh, I would love to have some more subscribers than I do. Uh, a few more followers than I do, but it's out there for people to help, uh, to help people. Um, and, um, and, and yeah, I just, if we can change this diversity um, space, particularly in the insurance world, but in general, and, and the Emerging Ally is not meant just for insurance, <laughs> it's broader. Oh, I, I, I do want to say one other thing. You, you, a couple of times uh, you, you said, it's hard to be who you are in our industry to truly bring your whole self to work. It yes, is. but it's getting better. So no, it is. It's so, so it, it's way better than it was 35 years ago. Uh, it's better than it that. was 10 years ago. It's a lot better. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and I think, I think the pandemic has accelerated it to a great deal. Uh, absolutely. So, so, so to the young actuary, to the young insurance professional out there, um, be yourself. And if, yeah. if, if the organization you're at is not supportive of you being yourself, reach out. Let, let's find you another role. Yeah. Right? Let, let's they, find you a better fit. Uh, yes. Uh, in, in today's day and age, in our industry where our skill sets are so in demand, and this goes 
10 times as much in the actuarial space, especially once you have your, your associates. Uh, yeah. and, and oh my God, if you have your, 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 your fellows, like, like there's no comparison. Uh, let's find you the right place. Reach out, yeah. chadwithtony.com. Uh, let's let's find you the right place where where, where you feel at home and where you can, where you can bring your whole self well, and, to work because and and if I can and any anyone seriously quite seriously if I can help reach out on LinkedIn let me know go to emergingally.com help let me let me know I I really want to avoid anyone going through what I went through thank you so much real pleasure to to chat with you today uh, thanks stay in touch of course thank you yes all right. See you. Bye.